Joining me now is Nigel Clark, one of the performers in Stomp. Hi, Nigel. Hi, yeah. How's it going so far? Then you're having a bit of a run at the Warwick Arts Centre. Has it been? Yeah, okay? it's been it's been great so far. We've done uh, three shows now. We've got another four to do. So um, yeah, it's going really well. We've had good turnout. Uh, audiences have been great. They've been enjoying it. Of course, there's audience participation in our show, so they have to actually get involved. So it's been good. Yeah, I'm really pleased to hear it. So one of the things I just said to you before we started was, it, you know, I wanted to do a bit of an interview about kind of what, what Stomp's about, really. So to people who have heard of Stomp but perhaps don't know a lot about the show, how would you kind of best describe it to them? Um, it's a group of people who make music from everyday objects, things that you'll find around your house or in the junkyard, things that you wouldn't normally think make music, mm. we make music with them. It sounds really exciting, but it sounds so simple as well. Like, so, and I know that it's like an hour and 40 kind of minute show. Yeah. So in that time, I mean, in terms of like generic theatre, is there like a narrative? Is there a story? Or is it literally just kind of a big musical extravagance? Um, there's a journey. You do come along a journey. You get to know characters. You get to know the way people interact. There's not a story as such, mm -hmm. um, but you definitely, there, there is a journey that you go through that we bring you on of okay. discovery. Brilliant. I mean, I'm really excited, honestly, because I've heard so much about it. And then, obviously, um, I know that Stomp performed at the 2012, was it the closing ceremony? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, things like that. So it's been on my radar for a very long time, so yeah. I'm really excited to see it. So how long have you been performing kind of with the group and with Stomp as a franchise? I joined about 17, 18 years ago. Wow, that's, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's only been running for kind of 25 years. Yeah, it? 25 years. So you've been, so you've been with it for a long Quite time. Quite a long time, yeah. I think uh, it's me and another guy, are the, the longest standing people still doing the show regularly. Mm. Does that mean that you kind of, I mean, are you literally touring with the show all year round? Or do you kind of do a few months and then do you do a few months of doing something else? Like, how does it work? Yeah, for me, I, I'm not full time. So I will come and do the show in Warwick. I did the show in Geneva a couple of weeks ago. And then before Christmas, I was in by, but I don't do continual shows. If you're, say, in the London cast, yeah. you will be in London doing shows more or less start of the year to the end of week the year. Week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. And if you're on the tour, depending on where the tour's going, mm. you might have, I don't know, 40 weeks of the year when you're, mm. you know, elsewhere doing the show, yeah. whether it's Geneva or That's Spain or wherever. So since you're an old hand, does that yeah. mean that you can kind of drop in and out whenever you like, do you have to go through a whole new rehearsal process every time you kind of come back into the we show? We rehearse every day before the show. Really? So you're before always Before every on single it. show we rehearse. Wow. So uh, we've got a show tonight, we'll rehearse at 5.30. Uh, 5.30 till 6.30 we'll rehearse, mm. then we'll have a little break, then we have what we call the 20, mm. which is another rehearsal 20 minutes before the show. Wow. Um, so to that end, it's like a constantly working and evolving process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, un you'll understand. Once you see the show, tonight that's you'll be like, oh, okay, that's why they rehearse all oh. the time. Yeah, no, it sounds like I'm going to learn a lot, so I can't wait. So what do you kind of personally enjoy the most about being a part of this show and this group? The people is the first thing. Mm. The people you get to work with are amazing. Everyone in the show, uh, we're all very different from different backgrounds. Some people come from dance backgrounds, some people come from drumming backgrounds. I mean, it's a real diverse bunch of people and we're from all over the world as well. So you don't just get people from England. You've got people from Brazil, America, Germany, Switzerland, yeah. France. So it's a really diverse bunch of people and, and working with them is, is a joy. Yeah, I mean, that must actually add a lot of joy to it, I can really imagine. Yeah. The other thing is that there's uh, a sort of improvisation side to the show. The, sh mm. the show changes literally every day mm -hmm. so yes you know what you're going to be doing but because of audience um, reactions because of um, things you might just put in the show yourself just that day or something somebody else might put in the show it keeps it fresh every day you do the show is it's it, different it, it, this thing like, just hearing you talk about it it just sounds so original and so unique you know i mean i love theatre but i've never heard of anything like this where there's just always a constant like working process yeah it's, it's totally different to, to and this, any like, other theatre yeah talking to you makes me really realise why it's been going for so long and why it's such a big name yeah so uh, the, other, the other reason that it's been going so long is because there's no language in, in the whole show mm. so nobody no says anything mm. in the whole show so you can do the show in Japan and they will totally understand it the same way as if you were in Spain um, just going back quickly to you saying how you know diversity is one of the things you really enjoy about it would you say that the show producers is that kind of what they one of the kind of ethos is of the of the franchise and of the group and is that what they tend to look for like do they look for diversity in their group? well yeah I mean I mean 
down to the implements we use. It, it's, it all starts right at the, the bottom, the root level of the show, and the, the different things that we use to make the music. They're diverse in themselves, mm. but you're not looking at a guitar, you're not looking at a drum, you're looking at a kitchen sink, you're looking at a car wheel, you're looking at a broom, you're looking at a dustbin lid. Mm, uh, and, and just those diverse implements that you're using, it starts there, and then you've got diverse people, and then you've got diverse places that you go. It's, it is like a bit of an ethos, the mm. whole thing. That's great. I mean, I was, I, one of the questions I was actually going to ask you was about kind of is there a particular country where it really took off? I mean, you talking about how there's no language in it and it is something that kind of transcends all those barriers. I mean, that must be a reason why it is so successful in so many different nations. Surely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It is, it is the main reason. The fact that we don't have any language, the fact that anyone anywhere can understand it, the fact that uh, we all have a rhythm beating through us literally 24 hours a day our hearts are all beating in rhythm mm. we, we all share this one thing that that nobody can really deny and then when somebody shows you it in a theatrical way you just you have to jump on board really yeah it sounds amazing it really does I see there are quite a lot of different groups kind of like stomp groups or stomp kind of, groups yes, yeah yeah that are performing across the world do you know how many there are actually going like right now how many different kind of groups there are oh I, I couldn't tell you really there's so many little tributes and things you get small things like um kids in school doing stuff mm. and and doing little tribute performances then we'll go into schools and 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 do workshops or go into workplaces and do team building workshops or corporate workshops so I mean the, the people that we've influenced and, and given a little bit of some to mm. then go and run and, and do their own things is it's probably too hard to count there's, there's probably hundreds and then but obviously you've got you've got one troop going in the west end is that kind of all the time yeah so you've got west end all the time then you've got the tour going around Europe most of the time and is that is this is that what this kind of group no this is no. like a special right. one that's been put on so <laughs> it's all very complicated the, the tour in Europe is actually in Bregenz at the moment. They just finished in Germany, in okay. Berlin, and they've just headed off to Bregenz. Um, then you've got London. Then uh, we, we're what you call a double up. So anytime the European tour is working, but another city wants the show, we put another cast together, right. a double up cast, mm -hmm. and we'll go there and do the show. So Warwick is a double up cast that's here at the moment. But then we've also got the show in New York mm. continuously, and then we've got one touring America as well. So at any one point, you can have about five usually five about shows. five going yeah. at any one time yeah. Yeah. in the world you've kind of spoken a little bit about the rehearsal process in that you're literally rehearsing all the time and working yeah. on it all the time but um, when you get a new cast together I mean is there ever a point where you get a whole cast working from scratch or is that um, no no, no we, we try yeah. to avoid that as much as possible I mean we've just had a new intake of, um, of Stompers the maximum we kind of would put in a show of new people that have only been doing the show, these people have been doing the show less than four months, so um, four would be the maximum. Mm. I think we've had one show here where there were four new people in it. And if there are, so with those four new people then, how do they kind of slot in to, to the process? Like, Do they just have to pick it up as best they well, can? You, no, you do, you do your training, which is about six, six to eight weeks. Right. Um, okay. So people who are starting from scratch, do they go to that training all together and then do they get sent out to different troops? Different yeah, groups, exactly. The they'll, they'll, go, they'll go to the training all together. Okay. Um, they'll do their six to eight weeks, which is about five days a week, eight hours a day gosh that's intense mm -hmm. yeah um, and they'll just learn the show so that they can actually do a show mm -hmm. and then once you get dropped into the show somewhere you might get put in in London you might get put in in the tour uh, then you're doing as many shows as you can to um, kind of get to the level that we want you to get to mm -hmm. so for the first year maybe two years you're still you're still learning even though you're learning in the show mm -hmm. while you're doing it of course does so, it tend to be quite a um, competitive process getting into being getting a into first? yeah getting into the show is very competitive. I mean, oh, we'll right. have open auditions that we'll hold at the theatre, mm. and you know, one thousand people will turn up and we'll be offering like six spaces or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. quite competitive for sure. Um, this is actually a question from one of the listeners. This okay. is kind of just obviously music is an essential part of of the performance. Yeah. Um, so this their question was: Is there any kind of sh stomp sheet music like for it? In in which case, how does that work? On and kind of how does the composition process work? You know, is it 
you know what I mean? Yeah. Because obviously there is music and you do play music yeah, yeah, with all um, your instruments. So how does that work? There, okay, so there somewhere there is the show is written down. Uh, in okay. in an office somewhere, there's the Bible and the show is written down. Mm. But that is mainly for people who are teaching it, mm. teaching the new people. When we teach it, we teach it phonetically. So we'll be like, ba ba da 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 da, like that da 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 da. So we'll actually teach it like that, mm. and uh, we will explain. Oh, that that beat is on the one and, and that beat is on the e, and and whatever musically, we will explain it like that. And if the person learning, um, if it helps them to write it down, they can then write it down and musically notate it if they want. Yeah. But some people don't don't work in that way yeah. because we have people from such diverse backgrounds. Some people understand music, and other people people totally don't. So we teach it in a way that's um, best for everyone, and then take on board what you need. If you need to write it and score it, then you can write it and score it. If you don't, if you much prefer the visual, or you much prefer the phonetic or singing it, mm -hmm. then we'll be working that way as well. Again, you're yeah. touching on that variety and diversity once again. Aren't yeah, I yeah. Um, just finally then, if yeah. there was one thing you wanted an audience to take away from the show, what would it be? That music is everywhere and um, everyone has the opportunity to partake in it. Brilliant. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me and I really hope the rest of the shows go well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.